The Obama administration is holding its third summit on bullying next week in Washington. It's a huge problem for American kids. By one estimate, as many as 160,000 students say, stay home on any given day because they're afraid of bullies at school. And in January here in New York, a 14-year-old took his own life, a bullying victim. His parents are now fighting back, as CBS News correspondent Tracy Smith reports. You're filming me. Cameron Jacobson was a pint-sized ninth grader with an outsized personality who was bullied to his breaking point. You know, sometimes kids are, you know, bullies, right? But they don't understand what bullying is or what its consequences are. Despite almost daily attacks, Cameron kept most of it to himself. So his dad, Kevin, has been piecing together emails and postings on social networks, getting an idea of just how vicious the bullying was. I would love to kick the that that midget Cameron. I can't imagine what it's like. Torture. It's got to be. It's psychological torture, emotional torture. You go back and you see, and each one is uh, just another uh, drop of water in the glass, and eventually... The glass overflows. On January 18th of this year, Cameron Jacobson hung himself in his bedroom. It's estimated that since 1983, there have been more than 150 young people who committed suicide after being bullied. How much pain were you in? How much pain were you in? Was Cameron in? Yes. How much pain? so much pain. And he must have been so hurt by people that he even called friends. In the nine months since Cameron's death, the Jacobsons haven't sought punishment for his bullies. Instead, they're raising awareness about bullying. I don't have to fight anymore. I don't have a child in the school system. But I'm there to fight for everyone else. I'm there to stand with them and figure something out because it has to stop. And the Jacobsons hope the story of Cameron's tragically short life might save others. Tracy Smith, CBS News, Monroe, New York. And Kevin and Wanda Jacobson join us this morning in the studio. Thanks for coming in. And Good we're so sorry for your loss. And it's been about nine months now. Um, and you have not given up. In fact, you have turned your son's death into as positive uh, a message as you can. Want to tell us why that's so important to you? It's important to me because of the impact that this has had on our own family. And um, we don't want any other family to experience what we have gone through in the bullying issues of Cameron and how the impact had brought him so much pain that he couldn't live with it and decided that to end his life. And to us, we never want that in, in another family, anywhere. It's just... Yeah, it's, it's, it's an incredible phenomenon. Um, we're reading about families that are losing children all across the country. A 12-year-old girl uh, three weeks ago. Every, every once in a while, uh, the press does pick it up and you see it. Uh, but we only think that the numbers are going to grow. There are, uh, the 24-7 phenomenon of cyberbullying, cell phone, the trolling that's taking place on some of the memorial sites. There's just a, uh, uh, an idea out there that this is almost like a sport where people can, or children in particular, can gang up on each other anonymously and uh, deliberately hurt somebody. And, and we've experienced hurt in, in, in the worst in and the worst possible way. And sadly, with what happened to Cameron, it's opened your eyes to this, like you've seen, you've now seen and heard all these different stories. Does it even amaze you? Um, it's just such, so prevalent now. I mean, I, I think even probably with Cameron, he seemed like such a strong young man. Did you have any idea that it was having this type of effect on him and the, the effect it's now having on all these families, like you mentioned, across the country? Well, no, I don't think anybody has the, the idea that it's going to end up this way. But um, when Cameron did come to us, uh, we addressed it. Um, but the difficulty is that uh, we know Cameron, and Cameron had a two and a half year history of being bullied. He was assaulted, he was in the hospital, he went through uh, painful surgery and rehab. So we know him personally, he's our son. So <clears throat> when, we, when we approached the school about the situation, we knew that it couldn't be handled in the traditional sense. This is an unconventional phenomenon. So we had to come up with an idea that fit 
the circumstance. And that's the problem that families face in America, is almost like a one-size-fits-all across the country, and it's failing. And it, it doesn't. And you, I mean, you really work. did do everything right. You talked to him, and he actually talked back to you. He told you things. You went to the school. You devised a plan. You took the computer away for a little while. You gave it back. What do you think is the most important uh, lesson that you can give to parents who may be worried about their child this morning? Well, I think that uh, the first thing is that parents need to be aware that this can happen to all of us. And uh, once the parents realize that we are really in the driver's seat, government should answer to us, school systems should answer to us. So if we get involved, if we get you know, the awareness out there and realize that there are programs, there are procedures that can take place, 7,000 schools uh, use a training framework that actually works. Uh, it includes parents, it includes mm -hmm. communities as a whole, and it really does reduce the numbers. They have to be involved. Yeah. Takes a village. Wanda, Kevin, thank you both yeah. for coming in and, and sharing your time today. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it.